Dr. Ngozi Azike is the director of the Illinois Department of Public Health and the Treasurer Office Women's History Month Award winner for Outstanding Commitment in Leadership. She's a board certified internist and pediatrician who joined the Illinois Department of Public Health from Cook County Health, where she had served for more than 15 years. In the past, Dr. Azike delivered inpatient care at Stroger Hospital, as well as primary and preventative care in community and school-based clinics. She also served as medical director for the Austin Health Center, where she engaged with the community through health initiatives involving obesity, diabetes, and breastfeeding. Dr. Zike graduated with honors from Harvard University with a concentration in chemistry. Her medical degree is from the University of California at San Diego. She completed her internship and residency at Rush Medical Center, where she is an assistant professor of pediatrics. And she also earned a management certificate from Harvard Business School. And I know we've all seen her and grown to appreciate her leadership in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. My question for you as we're coming out of Chicago winter, you completed your medical degree at the University of California, San Diego. You did your undergraduate on the East Coast. You came and completed your residency at Rush Medical Center in Chicago. What made you decide to stay here in Chicago? No, great question. I I absolutely uh, loved the people here. There's so many great people from all over here in Chicago, but there was one specific person uh, who became the uh, love of my life, the father of my children and my partner for life that got me to stay here and not go back to Cali. Uh, that is that is a great excuse. Well, we, we are very happy to have you. Now, we've gotten to know you a lot better this past year. It's been a very busy one for you. But maybe you could talk about your typical day. What time does a typical day start for you and what's involved in your daily routine? Yeah, so unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, there are just not enough hours in the day. Uh, and so that means that the days have to be really long to cover all the things that are going on uh, with this COVID response and the other other programs that uh, public health is responsible for. So uh, the normal day, uh, the banker's hours doesn't cut it. Um, you know, meetings start as early as 6.30. Uh, they really, you know, with all the town halls and trying to reach out to as many groups and organizations as possible, those go well into eight o'clock and then have to reconvene with my team to figure out what, you know, the other parts of my leadership team were doing during the day. So uh, that's before I've even gotten to go through the hundreds of emails. So I do have to start my day really early around four o'clock. I try four, four thirty ish, uh, try to get going, start off with actually start off with like prayer and, and meditation, try to read a good book and then try to uh, get do some emails and think big thoughts before the, the, the calls start going. Well, I guess it'd be safe to say that your typical day is atypical. Uh, and, if, <laughs> and if you had advice on how to get through those hundreds of emails a day and actually answer and read all of them, I know I am all ears. Yeah, uh, I'll let you know when I figured it out. That I, the, the truth is I can't get through them all. And so if you absolutely need me to see something, know something, like you better talk to me or tell me or flag it because they're really too many for me to get through. And sometimes even in trying to scan and pick out the most important ones, I'll, some do get missed. So I need some other people to flag what's super important and tell me like, hey, at 2.32, I sent this one, can't miss that one, you know? Well, I, I have the same thing. Uh, it sounds like you have a great staff. I know people have gotten to know you or feel like they might have gotten to know you in your professional role over the last year, seeing you on TV, but outside of your job as director of the Illinois Public Health Department. Is there a hobby or organization that you are passionate about? Yeah, what, what keeps me going through the week is looking forward to the weekend and getting to what my current passion is. I mean, I've always I've been a lifelong athlete, Division One athlete, but now uh, I play tennis. I'm very involved with the United States Tennis Association. I've captained teams. I play on multiple teams. So there's always a tennis match or two now that uh, sports is open. And so I very much look forward to uh, taking out some of the frustration uh, on those tennis balls. Well, I, I share that passion. I am ready not only for this pandemic to be over, but for Chicago winter to be over. Uh, Illinois is a, a little difficult to engage your tennis hobby, at least outside in the winter. Uh, <laughs> well, goodness, we have lots of indoor facilities throughout the state. So I have probably played in 
almost every tennis facility between here and Springfield. Oh, that is great. Now, uh, that's something that's a passion for you, but post pandemic, what's one activity you and your family are looking forward to doing the most? You know, uh, just being able to, to travel. I think one of the things that I became acquainted with for the first time since being in the role uh, at IDPH was going to the state fair. And so I went to the state fair for the first time uh, two years ago. Of course, we didn't have it last year, um, but I am very much looking forward to being able to go to the state fair. I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed that we will be able to get to that. Uh, my family, we all went for the first time and it was such a great time. We spent a couple of days there. I, I hope, I'm aspirational, uh, that that will happen again this, this summer. Well, we share that interest in common as well. My daughter and I go every year. We're very disappointed to miss it last year, but I, I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We still have a ways to go, uh, but I'm looking forward to that as well. So as, as we wrap up, what words of wisdom would you share with individuals uh, following in your footsteps, people who are looking to you, who want to be agents of change? I think to, to be a true agent of change, you have to surround yourself with the right team. I think you have to acknowledge that no one person has all the answers, but when you surround yourself with other strong, uh, intelligent people with a diverse array of backgrounds, you really get the most robust uh, product at the end because you've incorporated so many different viewpoints. You also need that team to be able to tell you when they think that you're off base and you know not leave the emperor without any clothes on. So again, I think it's all about the team and the people you surround yourself with and the people that you listen to and make sure you have a diverse array of people to bring on a diverse array of thought to every product that we're trying to deliver. I'll just say that's great advice. Uh, it seems simple. It seems something like everyone would uh, follow. However, a lot of people find it difficult to surround themselves with smart people or knowledgeable people or people with different uh, opinion. Uh, I think it takes a strong leader to, to bring on differing viewpoints. So I want to thank you, Dr. Ngozi Azike, for joining us today, for your Thanks insights so and for your leadership in Illinois. What a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much, Cheshire.